A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Budic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. Story number one. Cleansing, written by Chen Glo. You are trespassing upon the solar system of humankind. Please leave or you will be removed. Lord Executioner Haspic stared at the approaching human ship in disbelief. The spacecraft was no larger than a small cruiser. Beauty, compared to the behemoth of the flagship Haspic, had it at his command. It was painted in a hideous concrete grey colour, giving the ship the appearance of a floating utilitarian tower in the blackness of space. In stark contrast to the opulent gold and emerald starships of the cleansing fleet, and the voice that carried the message was not the charismatic melody of the human diplomats the Lord Executioner had grown accustomed to. It was monotonous and plain, a voice without intonation or excitement. It hinted at neither welcoming to the new visitors, nor terror at the scale of the gargantuan cleansing fleet. It was a surreal situation that gave the Lord Executioner the tingling fear that there was something incredibly wrong about this human ship. It was the warning instincts of a large apex predator, petrified by the approach of a sleek but terrifyingly venomous snake. In response to his stunned silence, the human simply repeated its message. You are trespassing upon the solar system of humankind. Please leave or you will be removed. The human uttered a second iteration of words with the same apathy as the first. Its ship continued to approach ever closer towards the cleansing fleet, undaunted by the size and splendor of the invaders. A virus of unease began to spread within Haspic's command staff, one that the Lord Executioner himself was not immune to. They all shared the same look of bafflement as they watched the lone craft drift at its leisurely pace towards the magnificent cleansing fleet. For the third time, the human repeated the message. You are trespassing upon the solar system of humankind. Please leave or you will be removed. The Lord Executioner shook off the clouding feeling that tickled the back of his neck. He would wrestle back control of the encounter and in return it to normalcy. He would strike fear into his foe, smear the human ship from time and space, and cleanse whatever planet lay within the solar system with apocalyptic firepower. Human weakling, I am Hasbeck, the Lord Executioner of the Cleansing Fleet, and it is our destiny to eradicate them. We do not care who you are. The human interrupted. Its voice was raised barely a decibel from before, as it began to breathe its words in at the slightest twinge of amusement. Transpassers that refuse to leave will die. With no further elaboration, the human ship began to accelerate towards the cleansing fleet. In mere seconds, the sleek human craft was rocketing impossible velocity, as though drawn to the cleansing fleet by the power of some dark magic of ancient superstitions. The swiftness and aggression of the human vessel caught the veteran Lord Executioner off guard. Never before had any human or any other race in the galactic community acted with such belligerence in response to something as trivial as newcomers waiting to leave the moment they arrived. Before he or his officers could give the order to open fire, the lone human craft had closed much of the distance to the cleansing fleet with the insane acceleration. It began to release a cloud of what seemed at first like metal scrap. It was only when the small spherical shells of metal the ship released began to move that Aspect realized what they were. Drones! he shouted. In the time it took for him to verbalize his thoughts, the swarm of drones had engulfed his fleet, swimming around the pristine flagship like a school of coniferous fish. The virus of unease that had swept through his fleet before evolved into panic confusion overcoming the ranks. The sluggish battleship of the cleansing fleet tried in futility to veer into safety, while the escorting ships watched helplessly, unable to engage out of fear of friendly fire. The human drones began to release wave after wave of missiles tipped with tactical warheads, 
overwhelming the shields of his ship through volume alone, and slamming against the hull of the proud battleship that had served Hasbuck so well in the past. The constant volleying of missiles blasted the shining gold plating from his beautiful flagship into radioactive space dust. All the while, the human mothership continued to release an unending sea of spherical drones. Knowing a losing battle when he saw one, Lord Executioner Aspect ordered a tactical retreat. Engage emergency hyperspace jump. We'll come back and smite them down another day. His escorts were quick to respond, zipping out of the solar system the moment he gave the word. But not his flagship. Hasbik's flagship seemed to be stuck in the middle of a hostile swarm. The jump drive has been disabled, a technician squeaked. Lord Executioner Hasbik wailed at his misfortune. Or perhaps it was a deliberate targeting by the human drones. With no other choice, he transmitted his surrender to the human vessel. Human, you have bastard me, he said, throwing his pride into the dirt for the sake of survival. I give you the honor of being the first Zeno to accept the surrender of the Lord Executioner. The human gave no response. The drones were now swarming over Hasbik's black ship like insects over a carcass, finding their ways into the bowels of the vessel. The Lord Executioner watched in horror as the security cameras displayed the human drones inside his flagship, methodically clearing room after room. As his own crew made their individual attempts to fight or flee or surrender in vain, a parody or perhaps a perfected demonstration of the very actions his own soldiers had performed on so many alien planets before, terror grasped the Lord Executioner as the sickening feeling of impending doom began to bubble at his stomach. I beg you, human, we surrender, Hasper cried. Take us prisoner, that is what you humans do, yes. Take prisoners, torture us for information, do with us what you wish, but please spare our lives. As an answer to his pleading, the entrance to the bridge burst open in an inferno of bright yellow flames. The flying metallic drones that emerged from the debris was no longer some small speck on the display. In person, it looked more like a berserk giant of a bull with its camera lenses and weapons focusing upon the mortal lord executioner it now dwarfed. No, please, Asbeck whimpered, with the premonition that these would be his own final words. He had found out too late that these enigmatic humans were far more experienced at his trade than he ever was. Now the Lord Executioner knew better than anyone what would come next. He was on the receiving end of a cleansing. End of story. Story number two. Void beings written by a glass of whiskey. Garden bladders, rare and sought-after specimens. Only a few species have more than a handful. To discover such a lush living thing is an extraordinary duck. Only the agrarians, a small ancient species that are masters of growing all living things, live exclusively on them. Gash giants, not as rare but almost as important. Mostly the dragons call them home swimming around in the gaseous interior. From within, they bring forth all fuel the system needs and more. A system doesn't really come alive until the dragons have moved in. Now, garden planets might be rare, but there is a saying amongst one of the species. You make your own luck. Although generally not as good, terraforming planets have long been a staple for intergalactic civilizations. Almost all species found in the galaxy live this way, filling up systems to the brim. It's a slow and arduous process, but necessary for all but one. The cold void of space. Most fear it, and rightfully so. A single mistake, and you not only kill yourself, but most of the people around you. Only one species is insane enough to live in it and call it home. No, marvel of engineering. No magic saves them, only stubbornness. They suffer just as much as anyone else in living in space, losing millions every day. Yet, they persist. They are humans, traders of the galaxy. 
We choose to do this, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Such stubbornness is what defines them. They construct rings of around worlds to live in and trade with the planet below and beyond. Marrying the system, as the humans call it. Doing this, they bind us all together. It is said that wherever civilization go, humans will follow to build a helping hand and connect it to with those back home. Given rise to the old saying, it doesn't matter how full a system is, there is always room for humans. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and 